I feel so different. I don't even know how to explain it. I'm so glad I'm having this conversation with Josh because it's all just coming full circle for me. When your mom passes, I see that as a part of a greater plan of passing the baton, saying, you're ready now to do your own thing. My job here is done. The first part of her life is going to be topsy-turvy, volatile, crazy, changeable, unstable. What up, y'all? Happy Monday. It's so good to be with you on this beautiful day. I hope you all are having a great start to your week. Today, we're going to be finishing up our conversation on numerology. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. This is Cheekies and Chill. Okay, guys, so as I mentioned, this is actually a part two of our conversation with numerologist Josh Siegel. He's been in this line of work for more than two decades, and he's been kind enough to do a reading on me. So let's pick up right where we left off. I am nervous. I have never done a reading like this. I know about numerology. I've read about numerology. I was into it a lot more before now I'm just kind of like I think on the surface but now I'm ready to get in Mm. there this is my first time talking to Josh okay I have not spoken to him before this I just literally met him because of my podcast so thank you to my cultura right here um and all he has is my full name my birthday and do you have the time I was born or no no, that's not needed that's only for astrology okay perfect so let's do it okay so we talk about you know your natural I call it your natural ability Mm -hmm. but you know on the websites you know, they'll say it's your destiny number, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In your case, it's a 52 seven. Okay. Now okay. it's a seven. You'll go on the websites. It'll say seven. It'll call it destiny number. It's not your destiny. It has nothing to do with that. Okay. The number seven is the number of truth and knowledge and delving into the mysteries and why Buddha, when he was born, walked seven steps in Islam. Mm-hmm. They have seven heaven, seven hells mm-hmm. in Catholicism. They have the seven holy sacraments. In Judaism, they have the seven candled menorah. In ancient okay. India, they have the seven great teachers called the seven rishis. Uh-huh. Okay, I can go on and on and on and show how every single major world religion, every, almost every single spiritual tradition that's been around for any length of time, venerates the number seven. Mm-hmm. So when we talk about your natural ability, you naturally, instinctually, delve into the truth and find the answer and figure that shit out because that's you were born with that you have the power to see through analyze find the truth find answers and spirituality can be a part of that there's certain things that you know inherently it's just and i gotta tell you something it separates you from other people in a weird way you're always going to be the way your mind thinks a little bit introverted in the way you think absolutely yeah you know people have ironies and contradictions in the chart you know Mm -hmm. And one of the things when you're dealing with with skeptics, they try to play this game and they say, well, what you said can apply to everybody. They get to this crazy, really illogical, insane area where they say, well, everything applies to everything. Mm -hmm. Heard it. What I'm saying is, is that we're going to get to all your numbers and we're just piecing it little by little. But if you want to know why you you inherently know this stuff and people in your family or other people, they're not understanding that. It's because you were born with, with the mystical seven. Part of your talent here is to share information, knowledge, and truth with others. I mean, you could do that through music, but it doesn't necessarily say music. It just says mm-hmm. that you're here to, sh- to share what you know with others. Now, Damn. I looked at that, and then I looked at your life path, which remember that's one of your lesson numbers. Mm-hmm. And so in numerology, there is a certain kind of number called a master number. Okay. Yes, the master number. Mm-hmm. And what they are, are just double digits that repeat 11, 22, 33, 44, 55, up to 99. If you got one of those and you got a 55 and an 11. So you got two of those master numbers in your chart. So um, you will, you will have certain special gifts inherent in that number. People listening right now may not know this, but they may have a special master number in their chart that they don't know about that may explain certain skills they've got. Right Mm -hmm. now, understand this, that master number also happens to be one of your life lesson numbers. Right. Oh, wow. Okay. So you've got a master lesson. So it's like, it's like, well, okay. I was given these extra skills or certain special qualities to me, but I have to learn that, you know, you didn't have mm-hmm. that in your natural ability. You have to learn it. So yours is a 55, 10, one. And right off the bat, there's some irony because five rules communications. 
right? Yeah. But I just said seven is a very introverted thinking number and it kind of separates you from other people the way you are, you, you, you know, the way you're different. But the 55 says your life's going to be about communications on a powerful level, right? Now, mm-hmm. here's the interesting thing about 55. Five is not a stable number. Okay. Okay. It is a freedom number. It is a restless number. It is a need for constant change, new things. Yeah. It can't. It can't stay stuck. It can't be in one particular situation for too long. So we, okay. it, it brings a kind of a want, like a travel adventure, new things in life. But if you're, if it's a part of a lesson, that means that there's a changeable energy to your environment growing up. It is not stable, and you know, because five by nature breaks the stability. Now there's the positive, and then there's a the negative in every number. Okay. Yes. The, the positive is you have a fast, quick, adaptable mind and, and you have remarkable communication capabilities, networking, communicating, mm-hmm. and innovating, you're, you're, you're new ideas, new concepts, and your mind is moving like this fast. Mm-hmm. And you have the ability to, the, to use the power of marketing and promoting and all that kind of stuff and communicate your message. Right? Yeah. Now, when, when I look at that, again, it's not like I say, well, that can't be well, music business could mm-hmm. certainly fall underneath that. But I'm thinking communication industry, period. Mm-hmm. And then I look at that seven and I'm thinking, oh, well, she's got to drop her knowledge. She's got to get deep. She's got to explain things to people. Now, she may do it in a very powerful, communicative manner. The first part right. of her life is going to be topsy-turvy, volatile, crazy, changeable, unstable. Since I can remember, my life has been emotionally unstable. I mean, at home with my mom and my dad not being together, it was always wishy-washy. They were back and forth. Um, we lived with my grandparents, then we lived in the garage with my in the back of my uncle's house. So my life has always been a little like hectic, for the lack of a better word. It's been it was beautiful, but then here comes the stuff with my dad that happened, the sexual abuse, and and then the issue with my mom and I. And it's just I feel like it has been an uphill battle. You're gonna have to learn discipline and focus. Mm-hmm. You got to take that it. fire. And mm-hmm. you got to discipline. Now you say, well, what happens when I take the discipline, when I discipline that double five, what well, moves from, you know, unstable lifestyle, everything's, you know, running around, being kind of crazy, being out of focus. Because think about this. If you're just running around you're, and you're doing this and you're scattered and you're not focused, mm-hmm. you can't get anything done. You can have great success. That's fucking true. Absolutely. Because, yeah. Oh my well, God. Well, you start something and you go into something mm-hmm. else and you're this and that. You're not focusing mm-hmm. in on things. I am right. Mm-hmm. Yep. So yep. now, uh, but when you discipline it, that double five is a power number, baby. That's there's a, I'd say, a life path waiting for you where you can use your innovative mind, your communication skills to, to become kind of the master of getting the message out. Yeah. And you, your mind is always thinking there's something, it's like an inventor. You're like, I got a new idea, I got this, I got that, but mm-hmm. I'm going to focus in on it and focus discipline in. my life. So I can get that thing happening so I don't repeat the crazy, tumultuous, unstable, out of whack shit. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You're speaking to my soul. All right. Now, (laughs) when you add down the 55, Mm. five and five make 10, one and zero make one. Okay. Yes. So one means that you're here to to really do your own thing and be a unique uh, leader in your field. That means you have to have a strong sense of self and identity. Like, this is who I am. Mm-hmm. I, I'm doing my own thing. I'm not a follower. One one leads all the numbers. One doesn't go, hey, three, when do I start? They're like, dude, you're one. You start, we follow you. All right. So one represents the identity. That means you're going to have a parent who may, uh, their identity may be either too big or their identity may be strong and they may uh-huh. have some kind of a narcissism to them. You know, I'm some sort of level. What the fuck? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. And so they're going to overshadow your identity. Your identity is going to be carving out who you are. You have to create your own thing. Remember, it's a, I said this is a lesson number. I didn't say Dude, it came crazy. to you like that, right? Mm-hmm. Now, I've also, oh just so, so you understand, there are cases where you also can be abandoned in a weird way. So there can be control, like mm-hmm. you got to be like this, you should be like this. They look at you as an extension of them, where they see you as that, and they maybe have opinions and things like that, mm-hmm. you know? And then you're like, but then you grow up thinking, well, who the fuck am I? Mm-hmm. My own identity didn't get carved out. I was too affected by the narcissistic person who over-identified with themselves to help you to see you. You, you got overshadowed with that. Now, you have to understand mm-hmm. there's the other side of that too. So being around very insecure people who, are, who don't know who they are mm-hmm. is not good for you just as much as being around people who are all about themselves and narcissistic. And I got to tell you, there's a, a likelihood that you'd grow up out of that and attract 
the two extremes of the narcissistic access. So that would be like somebody, well, you're going to repeat what you know. You think you, you think you're going to oh get conditioned God. by that? <laughs> Dude, I want to cry. I'm fucking tripping out right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Keep so, going. Sorry, Josh. <laughs> so, so that's your pro remember that's your matrix. That's wow. your program. And so you're going to, the program is don't be you. It ain't about you. Then you go out. What do you think is going to happen? You're going to say, oh, well, it's not about you. Then it's going to be about me. And then you're going to attract mm-hmm. another narcissist and it's going to be about them. And then, and here's the thing, what I found is something called an undercover narcissist. I found mm-hmm. this out from talking to my clients because sometimes they attract these people who are like, let me give you an example. Like you have a friend that their life is just, oh man, they never figure it out. They're always got a problem, an issue. They're, they're insecure. They always, they never get over the hump. And then yeah. something really great happened in your life. You want to sit down and tell them, but you look in their eyes and they're like, oh, I can't say this. Uh-huh. I can't tell them that they're already, this is going to make them feel worse. I'm going to yeah, eclipse yeah. them. You keep yourself a little smaller around them. So you they dim don't your feel light. Bad. You mm-hmm. dim your light. Let me tell you something. What's the difference if you attract a narcissist that becomes all about them and you lose yourself to them, or you're with somebody that's insecure, so insecure that you dim yeah. your light so they don't feel bad. To in make both them cases, feel better. Yeah, yeah. In both cases, you were giving away yourself. Fuck. Yep. And the funny thing about this is when I talk to ones and I ask them about this stuff, sometimes they had a parent that was an e- egotist or they were, or narcissistic or they were, they were about, they were, you know, this big person. And sometimes they had a parent who was insecure and unsure of themselves. And in both cases, mm-hmm. they had the same, they both had a loss of self, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. I don't know. What to, I told you there's things I don't know. I don't know which yeah. one it is because they, they have a similar response. I know this much. You can still attract either one of those if you're going to repeat your pattern. And then you have to wake up and go, wait, 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 wait. I can be loved and be and shine my light at the same time. Josh is absolutely correct. I have dealt with both sides of the spectrum, narcissistic and insecure but pretended to be very secure, but in reality wasn't. I'm not going to say any names here, you guys, but I've dealt with that with family members in relationships. I had a very narcissistic partner once in my life, and I felt like it was just all about him, and he wasn't really allowing me to be who I am meant to be in this world. It was, in a way, it was was all about him, but then he was also insecure because he was afraid of what I can become. So when I said, hey, I want to continue to do this, X, Y, and Z, it was like, well, no, I want a wife that stays home and has children and all these things, which is fine, but I had goals that I wanted to accomplish. So I had to X and A that relationship. And then in one of my past relationships, he was very confident exteriorly, like he, you know, on his exterior, he was like, yeah, you know, I got this, but my light kind of not bothered him, but I I guess I did. I had to just step back a little bit and not be myself to my full potential because I didn't want to hurt his feelings. I didn't want him to feel like he was less than or felt inadequate or felt inferior, you know, but then that wasn't good for me either. So I had to let go of that relationship. And now I can honestly tell you that I'm with someone that does allow me to be myself. You know, there have been times when he tells me, you know what? I feel like not not intimidated, but like where he feels, am I enough for you? And he definitely is. But more than anything, he allows me. He loves that I am who I am. He he wants me to be better. So it just feels good to have someone like that, like where I don't feel like I have to be less than or I either way, like dimming my light. Now, would you would you be with someone like that now? No. OK. Nope. Right. Now, now, you now asked- I know. Now. I OK. Know. All right. Remember, I deal with facts. I'm a son of an mm-hmm. attorney. Mm-hmm. You done asked me earlier. You said to me, <laughs> uh, is, is this your fake? Is this your shit? Is this how it's always going to be? And I said, I got 20,000 cases. I know for a uh-huh. fact people can change. Yeah. And even before they talked to my big mouth ass, right? And and you know what you just did? You just factually confirmed it. I used to date that, yep. but I don't do it. I would never do it now nope. because I woke up. You woke up out of the matrix. I'm woke. Okay. Honestly, in that aspect, now I'm like the crazy shit is that you're just, you're confirming so many things. And I've never said this before, but, but my mother was that Mm -hmm. 
a woman that for a long time I was in her shadow since I can remember, you know what I mean? Because yeah. she was just this huge force. And I always felt like for a long time, I felt like my destiny was to be by her side and help her shine and build her up. And then one day would be my time. Never did I think she was going to pass. And then I, it was only until then that I was able to find the strength within myself to say, okay, let me step into my own light for a long time. It was just, and even, even in the beginning of my, of, of my, of my career, it was difficult because it was the comparison, like, and it's taken a lot of work for people to be like, Hey, it's me. It's cheekies. Like, don't look at my mom. Like, don't compare yeah. me to her. We're two different individuals. But yeah. I feel like now, finally, especially with this new tour, this new album, I feel like yeah more confident than ever. Barely. Like where right. it's like, so, I thought, but now I'm like, I think I got this by the balls now, you know? <laughs> hey, listen, when your mom passes, that's a part of this greater, I see that as a part of a greater plan of passing mm -hmm. the baton saying, you're ready now to do your own thing. My job here is done. Now it's time for you to, you know, create your own path, not based on me. I'm passing the baton on to you. I've never said that before, and that's how I feel. I almost feel wrong with saying that, but I feel like if no. my mom and I were both here, I don't know. It's not I, the correct word is she wouldn't allow it, but I just feel like I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if yeah. if she was still here. You know what I mean? Maybe because she yeah. was such a huge force, and she continues yeah. to be. Don't, don't get me wrong, but yeah. I do feel like it's more like God said, "Okay, well, here, I'm a, your mom's gonna go rest now, and we're gonna yeah. allow you to do what you have to do." You know, but That's I've right. never said that out loud because I'm like, how the fuck is that going to sound? But I've always felt it within me, yeah. you know? No, it's like, you love your mom. I mean, people love their moms. Course, I mean, it's like, I love her. nothing to do. Love the hell out of her. So it has nothing to do with that. It's just that your journey, right? Your mm -hmm. journey needed, we needed to transit. I call that the catalyst. And sometimes the catalyst comes, a person comes in your life and sometimes someone leaves. Mm -hmm. But it's always a catalyst because it's a time frame in your life where you're ready for growth and, and the universe kind of sets that up in a way. Right. Yeah. And so, and, and that's part of the process. Now we talk about personality 29, mm -hmm. 11, and now okay. 11 is a two. You can, you can add 11 and become a two. So we know that, but we, but, but master numbers, um, the 11 is the, the first master number because it's a double one, all the other master numbers, you know, 22 is two times 11, you know, 33 yeah. is three times 11. So that we always, we just add a respect for the 11. We just keep it. It's the original master number. Okay, now you have that yes. in your personality. Now eleven does rule the media. Okay, so okay. we now know you have a media. We have a media personality, inspirational. You have a certain dynamic quality to you. Certain ch charisma may come through that. That's the eleven. People go go online and read about the number eleven. You can write mm -hmm. eleven personality and all that kind of stuff, and you can see these are aspects of the eleven. Now we already have communications, right? Mm -hmm. And a powerful communication, and we have seven is dropping that knowledge and bringing your truth, and then we have a media like personality. Yeah. Okay. It's crazy. Now, now, am I supposed to be shocked that you're doing a podcast? You're communicating your knowledge and your truth, right, within the within a media context. Now, I'll tell you something that's interesting. That eleven personality gives a sort of dynamic quality to you, where the seven doesn't have that. The seven is the seven will nerd out on you, or will get spiritual with you, or will get mm -hmm. deep with you, but they don't necessarily have a good personality. Yeah, yeah, the seven is Janae, and I feel like the eleven uh, is Cheeky. Those are my two different yeah. people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the eleven will dramatize that, you know. Yeah, the eleven will inspire and they'll have, and, and then you got a double five. Remember, five's fire and it's mover and mm -hmm. a shaker. You know what I mean? Yeah. A little, a little, little wacky, a little, little impulsive, a little how to how to learn how to take this topsy turvy craziness and 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 and, and discipline it. But yeah. but it certainly got the magnetic, powerful communication ability. See, this is why I said I, I wouldn't I would have not have known necessarily you were you were a singer. I know that yeah. you're involved in communications. I know you'd be mm -hmm. in the media. What you're doing now is more connected to those numbers that I see than anything. However, yeah. I know this I know this one thing. I know from being a musician and a writer myself, you know, that music is a you know, a media outlet that you can you can bring your truth to others through. And mm -hmm. you can communicate that to others, right? Yeah. It is communications. It is the media. You, you know, the lyrics in which you say, you can bring, you know, deeper meaning in it. But notice how you're doing a podcast. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. and now, how many singers do a podcast? Not very many. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason why is, is that we have straight communications and informational stuff going on here. 
yeah. you know, communi- you know, communication industry, telling the truth, talking about it, breaking it down mm-hmm. in a communication environment through some media outlet. And we see that that is apropos to your chart where mm-hmm. just someone who was a straight singer wouldn't do that. You yeah. see how your chart shows this? Perfectly. Absolutely. Yes. It's crazy. Yes. You know? Wow. Now in music, you can say something, but I mean, you got some real communication industry stuff. This is radio. This is TV. This is writing a book. You know, it's kind of like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And that's what makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because you, why? Because you have no alternative. You're a seven. You, you've got to share what you know, your truth yeah. with others, and you're going to do it through the media, but you're going to do it in, in, in a, in a, maybe in an unconventional way, in a crazy mm-hmm. way, in, a, in an edgy way, you know, that double five, you know, so you, even your even your inner drive is another five, you know. Now, I'm going to say when I see a, a 55 and another five, it's okay, well, you know, there might have been some excessiveness in some department in your life or impulsivity you had to learn how to work Absolutely. through. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know? Definitely. All right. So now let's get to the, the deepest lesson of your chart, your ultimate goal. Okay. Let's do which it. Is your higher, which is your higher purpose. Okay. Okay. And then, and then we're going to go back in time and we're going to see how your, your, your life played out into those cycles. Okay. Right. All Get right. Down. So now here's the interesting thing about it. 17, eight is your ultimate goal number. All right. So mm-hmm. let me make this clear what an eight is. Okay. Eight is a number of authority and power. It's, it is a, a number of someone who builds their own empire and their own business. Nice. Okay. okay. Could be via communications. Could we can't, we're not going to throw out the other four numbers. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, but all the stuff that you do needs to be put into building a business where you are, yeah. you are the authority, where, mm-hmm. where you are in charge and you are creating success for yourself, but in the right way. And that's why I'm going to get into what the right way is. So okay. the thing about eight is psychologically, it is always self-worth, self-value as a lesson. So I can tell you right now that many people in this world who are extremely successful have lo- had low self-worth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people tell me, they're like, why is that? And they say, well, you have something to prove. Okay. You are driven to to succeed, right? To go beyond these feelings that you have, right? To, to compensate for that, for those self-worth concerns. Okay. You know, when you have an eight, you have to learn to value yourself. That who you are is, is worthy. Uh, Yeah. Yep. And, And I got to tell you, it's strange because you think, well, if someone's got self-worth issues and they don't, they don't value themselves the way they should or what they're worth, of course, earlier in their life, they're going to put themselves in comprom- compromised situations. Mm-hmm. Now, you can do that in work, but you can do it in relationships, right? Absolutely. Where you are not treated as if you are valued. Okay? <sighs> yes. Now, there's an interesting thing. Eight also rules the material world and finances and money. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, if you have 17, eight, you know, seven rules that spiritual truth, that deep yes. stuff, and then mm-hmm. eight rules, the money and the power. Yeah. And, and when it's coming together as a deep lesson, that means there's, I call it a love hate relationship mm-hmm. with the money and power. And, and that we have to think about what was going on growing up with the mentality, yeah. the value system of your parents. Okay. Where they came from. Cause you know, with eights, you can go up or down. You know, eights can can become extremely successful, but their background shows that they're learning how to have a, a spiritual relationship, a positive relationship with money and the material world and success. Because if, if you take straight eight, it's all about the success, and it doesn't matter anything else. Okay, it's yeah. about it's about money, and success, and achievement. If you take just the seven, it's like, oh, it's about what I do is being feeding my soul. It's about doing something mm-hmm. meaningful. It's about doing something that I use my, my deeper talents for. It's not about how much money I make. It's not about the status and the success, okay? Yeah. Your value has always just been you. In my past, I've struggled with with self-worth. I mean, it could come from everything that I lived through when I was younger and being you know, sexually abused by my father. You feel like, what am I really worth? Like That really affects you. Like Your confidence as a young lady and growing up, you feel dirty. You feel like you know, so many things like no one's going to want me because I'm already quote unquote used in other words, you know what I mean? So all those things affected me so much. And then obviously losing my mom and having to like stand on my own two feet. And now this is why I feel like everything is just, I feel so different. I don't even know how to explain it. I'm so glad I'm having this conversation with Josh because 
it's all just coming full circle for me. Like now I feel like I'm not going to put up with anyone's shit. Now I'm going to speak my mind. Now I feel worthy. Now I have Abeja Reina. Abeja Reina is here. In my intro, that's what I say. She's here. I'm here. We're here to stay. Like, ahora sí me la creo. Like now I'm like, I'm worthy. And I have to tell myself that a lot. I'm worthy. I am worthy of love. I am worthy of success. I am worthy of being financially stable. Like those are all affirmations that I tell myself on every day because sometimes my past can come and try to seep into my future. Now, when you grow up with this, what's odd is this stuff can play out in relationships and you think, well, how would that play out in relationships? It does. The people you track, their self-worth and their value system about what's important in life and how much they put on outer success and achievement and status, things and stuff, mm -hmm. and how much they put in the deeper stuff, right? Yeah. So the first thing we need to do is go back and talk about where your parents came from originally. Okay. What happened with their goals and success? Now, you say your mother was a, a, a very successful person, kind of mm -hmm. overshadowed by her to some degree. Where'd your dad come from? Where'd your mom come from? What did they do? What was their focus in life? What was their mm -hmm. value system about money, success, achievement? What was their self-worth level inside? Tell me about both of them, where they came from. Okay. So my mother, she grew up, I could say, like poor. You know what I mean? So okay. she was very loved, had a very pretty and beautiful, I think, um, childhood. And right. then she always would say I was the ugly duckling and I was always just stuck in my books because boys didn't like me. And she was like, you know, ugly duckling. So she was mm -hmm. top of her class, Valley Victorian. And as she got older, she, the reason she said that she started singing was because she wanted to feed her children. And I think it just became a thing that didn't necessarily make her a hundred percent happy. It was something that just brought, she was good at and brought her a lot of money in right. a way to take care of her children. But for her, it was very much as far as like money was, yeah. I'm going to buy this house. I'm going to have this car because I didn't have it when I was younger. It, it did make oh. her feel very valuable. Oh, oh my God. Okay. So just yeah. thank you for that. It's so well done. Mm -hmm. All right. So your mother who had a huge impact on your life had yeah. low self-worth as a child. She actually thought she was ugly. Always. And mm -hmm. and she overcompensated by doing well in life in school to overcompensate, mm -hmm. like put get get it in the you know what I'm saying? Well, people aren't yeah. gonna like me, boys aren't gonna like me, so I better I better find something that be I can smart. be be smart. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna that'll be my success. And then later on in life, she became a singer, not for the joy of music necessarily, but to make mm -hmm. money so she could have the things she didn't have when she was poor, which means her mm -hmm. entire drive in life was to overcompensate for being the ugly poor child. So she can have the material things to make up for what she didn't have. Yeah. Yep. Oh, oh my God. That's I know. I know. And for I mean, her, that's, it was, that's really deep. Yeah. And for her, for a long time, she, she wanted to stop singing because it was, I mean, it's a lot on your body. It was the touring yeah. and the late nights and stuff. Yeah. But it was just like, I'm good at this. And she was just, she's a monster in, in, right. in her genre, you know, and still is. So I think it, it just, it was just a way of like, I'm tired. I don't know if I want to do something else, but this is what gives me that power, that financial stability. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and she loved buying those expensive things because it just, and the diamonds and the this and yeah. that, because she didn't have that when she was younger. So for her, it did make her feel better. Like I'm successful, but I know in her heart, like there was, there were a lot of things that she was sad about, you know, like when she was at home by herself and the conversations we had and stuff like that, you know, but externally she seemed like this very confident, strong woman, you know, and my dad, my dad, I don't, you know, he, he was also, he was born in Mexico. So he mm -hmm. came from a, a very poor family. Like there was 15 mm -hmm. children. Um, oh, wow. He worked and he was in real estate. That's how him and my mom met. Or actually, no, that's not how they met, but they worked in real estate together like earlier in life. Um, and I don't know too much about him, to be honest. He was just more of like a mellow type of dude that just, yeah. hey, I'm, I'm making money, taking care of my family sort of thing. What do you do? What kind of work do you do? He did uh, real estate. That's all I ever knew that he did was just he was a real estate agent and he did he did fairly well with that you know okay. um now he's in jail he's in jail for what he sexually molested me when when I uh, I was a little girl I'm sorry to hear that um, no, it's okay mm -hmm. what was it like for him to have his wife blow up like that I'm sure she made more money than he did he yes she always did make more money my mom I'm telling you was the you know she was 
super, super, he didn't want her to go to school for a long time. He didn't want her to finish um, high school. And she was just very adamant about it. She went to college. She had a good job. Um, And then when my mom wanted to start singing, that's when the problem started. You know, it was just like, no, you got to stay at home with the kids. So he wasn't okay with that. So that's why they separated. Ultimately, you know, he cheated and stuff like that. But yeah, that was ultimately because he wasn't allowing my mom to do what she wanted to do. Okay. Now let's go back to the 17, eight, Mm -hmm. uh, overcompensate, you know, change in, yeah. in financial status, overcompensating for low self-worth, making yeah. that your way of showing that you're worthy because you got the external things, you got the diamonds, you got the material objects, you got the car and all that, right? Yeah. Okay. But you still haven't healed the low self-worth. Mm-hmm. I think it's amazing what your mom did. I Don't get me wrong. I think it's incredible. She obviously was extremely talented. What I'm saying is it didn't heal her wound. Mm-mm. She still had that sadness when you sit at the kitchen table and you talking about that shit, the diamond rings and the fur coats, all that shit that she didn't have growing up that she thought if I could have this, I could have the things that I don't have. It didn't fix that. Yeah, no. You know, on top of that, your father didn't want her to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you got to think about this. He's a man. He's a, you know, he's a Latino man, right? Yeah. And, and, And hit the wife is making more money than him or, you know, potentially. Yeah, that was you know that I mean? was tough for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so what did that do? Affect his self worth as a man, and he's now yeah. competing with her. He's not liking that. He can't be the he can't be the breadwinner where he unless she stops working and he's the the sole breadwinner, and then he can be the man, right? right? So his self worth is being affected by that by her success eclipsing him, mm-hmm. and she's trying to control her. So it's all about her goals and outer success because that's affecting him negatively. Yeah. So it's self-worth on his side and it's about success and achievement being a point of contention that led to the demise of your parents' relationship. Mm -hmm. Now you know why I say there's a lesson in that world that you might have a love-hate relationship with money and power because money and power was the cause of so much pain and suffering growing up. My goodness. Yeah. Do you see it? I absolutely do. And I've been dealing with this for the past two months. Moving homes, having a bigger responsibility. And it's kind of like that song, uh, Biggie song, more money, more problems you feel. And I don't like to look at money in that way at all because I feel like it's a blessing, you know, and I try to look at money in a very positive way, no matter how it's affected my life in the past, because people, when they have money and power, some people, not all people, some people that aren't emotionally healthy will do certain things and hurt other people because they can, because they have that financial stability and they're wealthy and they have that power. So anyways, that's a whole other subject, but it is so important for me that I take care of, like one time they told me at church to be a good steward and I've struggled with that my whole life when it's like, I have some money and instead of saving it, instead of making the right choices with it, I spend it on things that I don't really need, more luxuries. You know what I mean? Things that it's just like, you know, like lo mal gasto, you know, and I feel like right now God and the universe are teaching me a lesson of learning. Like if you have $5 and we had an episode on this, you guys save $3 of it, you know what I mean? And spend two of it. You know what I mean? Like that's just a little example, but that's just kind of like the lesson that I feel I'm learning right now because sometimes we don't know or appreciate the value of money. So you guys remember, save your money. No anden gastado en pendejadas. I'm telling myself that too. Now, understand the timing mm-hmm. in your life, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. You're in an 11 year. You have an 11 personality. You can Google 11. You can find yeah. out what 11 is. I mean, there's some standard. I mean, a lot of stuff on the internet's bullshit, but you know, but some of it's just basic stuff here that you can learn. So an 11 is, an, is a cycle when you're going to have shifts of consciousness and awakenings. And you're, and you're going to realize certain things. And now you have to think about the matrix. Now, what's the matrix going to say? You're going to attract people in your life. Mm-hmm. And you always got to check what is their value system and mentality. Okay. Yeah. Well, you want to be around successful people who do what they do because they love it, not just for the money, not to compensate, yeah. not to be all about the status. And also in business, who are you attracting? Who are you working with? You know? Okay. Are you, are you getting a positive thing or a negative thing about business? You know, what are the, what's their mentality and their value system and who's in control and who's the authority? Oh my God. Yeah. You know, now 
I don't know exactly what happened in your childhood. I never, I never mm-hmm. said I know everything. I mean, I, yeah. I, I know the basics of it. I know the dynamics. So I, I ask, you know, I'm not a psychic. I, this is a mathematical formula that gives me a blueprint of what might have mm-hmm. happened and how that affected you. And I know for certain that we repeat whatever happened to us. So you got to figure that out. And look, I've done 20,000 sure. of these things. So you, you learn kind of how it works. You're going through a major shift right now. Change of mind, change of heart, reevaluation Fuck of yeah. your life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I bet For you a million dollars that it's related to you main, maintaining your, first of all, your identity and doing you. And number mm-hmm. two, it has to do with your self-worth business, your, your goals that you want to accomplish and keeping your integrity of what you want to do and who's in power and this kind of stuff. And making Absolutely. sure that your, your pathway is in alignment with your value system. Oh my God, yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's absolutely what's going on. And it's been really pulling on the strings of my soul to the point where it gets me in a bad mood where I'm just like, wait, like I, I'm very intuitive. I know. And I'm like, I'm, I can't ignore this because it's later on the universe is going to kick me in the ass, but that's exactly what's going on. Absolutely. Right. And then you have to look at this. Am I going to do the programming and repeat the fact that that world Mm-hmm. symbolically related you know, to your mother and your father. We went over that. I don't have to go over that. Do, am, do I have to repeat that pattern and play out that money's the root of all evil or business or all that kind of, whatever that shit is, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Or can I wake up out of the matrix and say, you know what? I'm going to make sure that my business turns out the right way. Yes. I'm going to make sure that I keep my integrity and that I work with those who do. I'm going to make sure that the truth and honesty and all that's going to be a part of this and that my, I'm, I see myself as the manager of my own life because I'm my own authority and I'm going to have mm-hmm. the self-worth to say what I need and what I want. Yep. Absolutely. Yes. Even though my self-worth got kicked in the ball sack growing up seeing all that <laughs> shit. Yes, I know. But you know? I, I am adamant about making the changes necessary in my life. So this was honestly wonderful. It really did answer so many questions. It confirmed a lot of things for me. And I just, I feel that, I, I mean, we can do this off of the podcast, right? I can have a session yeah. with you later. Okay, yeah. I actually just- didn't get back to doing those, <laughs> those magical cycles because those are wild when you go back and you see how things played out during these certain yeah. number cycles. But I guess we don't have enough time for that today. Yeah, I know, you know, but uh, but it's okay. I do want to speak to you. I'm going to tell my yeah. producers um, for mm-hmm. us to. I would love to have your number so I can have mm-hmm. a session with you. I have a lot of questions. Yeah. Um. You know, but but I I'm honestly, I you guys, I'm in like all right now. My mouth is open. I'm. I have. I I I feel like I want to cry, but of excitement because mm-hmm. I'm just like, oh my mm-hmm. gosh, I feel like I can rest with so many things. It, it's just yeah. it's hard to explain because I feel like I would have to get in into detail. But either way, Josh, thank yeah. you so much. I am so grateful. You are definitely gifted and in what it is that you do, because the thing is, yes, I know you said this is very factual and everything Mm -hmm. and like it, it's all connected, but you are also very intuitive. It all goes together. So, and Josh, I don't know if you want to share uh, your social media or a website where people can find you. Yeah. So, I mean, the website's, you know, Josh code, my Instagram is at numerology, Josh at numerology, Josh. And today's motivational quote is, I wasn't ready for half the shit I went through, but clearly I'm built for it. That's what numerology says, guys. We're built for the stuff that we're meant to go through. We get out of it. Y hay que darle. Again, you guys, los amo, los quiero. Thank you for being with me on Chiquis and Chill. I will, uh, you know, catch you next Monday. Peace out, y'all. And guys, I want to let you know there's a brand new way for us to keep in touch. You can now leave me voice memos directly through the iHeartRadio app. Just click the microphone at the top of the Cheekies and Chill podcast homepage within the iHeartRadio app. And if you don't already have the app, you can download it for free. Your questions and comments could be featured in a future episode. So feel free to tell me what's on your mind. This is a production of iHeartRadio and My Cultura Podcast Network. Follow us on Instagram at My Cultura Podcasts and follow me, Chiquis, that's C-H-I-Q-U-I-S. For more podcasts from iHeart, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.